Welcome everybody and to our Mahara 2004 new feature session. I'm very happy that everybody is able to join in today and um, is also interested in taking a look at the new features. If you do have any questions, please feel free to unmute your microphone and um, ask in between, but I'll also make sure that we have a um, few minutes at the end uh, to answer your questions. And um, if we are at the top of the hour and there are still uh, people that do have questions, I'm happy to stay longer as well. But we should be able to make everything nicely within the hour. Um, like with every release of Mahara, we would like to thank a lot of people that have contributed to this release. And it is not just the developers that are to thank for, but really all the community members that are part of the release. And so we have um, people that are reporting bugs, that are reporting features that should be implemented into Mahara, um, people that are providing funding, um, in particular organizations that provide funding for new features. And so we've been very lucky to have funding from several organizations in New Zealand um, and also from other parts of the world uh, that contributed features to this 2004 release. And we have our translators that are keeping the application accessible to people in in different parts of the world um, whose mother tongue is not English, making it more accessible to them. And also our BA UX teams, graphic designers and system administrators that keep in particular our project infrastructure up to date in order to allow us to keep everything secure there. We also, of course, have um, front-end developers that make sure that the graphic designs that are implemented look really good. Um, event organizers like um, the Kiwi Mac organizers and also Maxi, Makara and everybody else who is holding events this year, most likely only virtually like we are doing today in order to bring people together and um, collect insight from, from others around how to use Mahara. So lots and lots of people are always contributing to the to a release of Mahara. Uh, sometimes they are not as aware of, um, of it than others. And so I'd just like to acknowledge everybody who's been involved in this Mahara 2004 release. And if you'd like to become more active, um, please do get in touch with me. So what we are going to do today is uh, look at a number of the highlights um, that you can find in Mahara 2004. Um, like always, there's a bunch of new features. Sometimes some are smaller, some have a bigger impact that you can take advantage of. And so I just like to show you the ones that I find really outstanding because they have a bigger visual impact or also a bigger impact on how Mahara functions. And so let's start with the first one, the language toggle. And for that, I'm going into my Mahara instance. Um, I'm logged in as a student in this case. And if your Mahara instance has a number of languages installed, you will see the language toggle as part of the navigation menu at the top right and can very quickly switch between all the languages that um, are installed on the site and therefore have easier access to them. And so whenever you switch to a language, a page refresh is done, um, meaning that um, if you were typing anything in a text box, then you would be asked whether you want to leave um, the page or not, and uh, then can switch to to the language and the interface changes. What it doesn't do is automatically translate your text that you have entered. So it really only changes the interface language. But that is a much faster way than needing to go into your settings, preferences, and then selecting the language from this menu. 
Now another easier way of um, yeah, use another usability improvement that we have made um, is improving how to share pages with other people. Because if you are on a multi-tenanted site, like I'm here, and we do have a number of those around the world um, where organizations share one Mahara instance um, in order to take advantage of having the same feature set, being able to interact with each other, then um, there can be a lot of people on a site. And so typically, um, people want to share with others in their institutions. So imagine you have a lot of people on the site, um, sometimes potentially even the same names. So how can you find the people from your institution much faster? This is where this feature comes into play. Um, when you want to share your page with a person, that you now see all the people from your own institution first and only then do you see people from other institutions. And that allows you to very quickly then narrow down with whom you want to share things. And so you can share your portfolios with people, in this case, James from school. And if there were any other Jameses, then they would appear here as well if they were also as members of school or appear in the other drop, um, drop down or in the drop down further down if they were members of other institutions. And that really helps to narrow down um, who can or with whom to share a portfolio. Now, a number of you that I'm seeing here in the um, in the chat list have been using Mahara for many, many years. And um, that oftentimes then also means that you're accumulating a lot of uh, Mahara pages and also are a member of a lot of Mahara groups. And so one feature that uh, comes out of Switzerland that we were um, able to implement this time around is that it is often not so easy then to, to actually find certain groups because imagine you have a hundred, you're a member of a hundred groups and 20 groups were actually from the previous semester and 20 groups from the, the one before. All the groups are always listed alphabetically. How do you really find the things that are important this semester? And that is where our labels come in. So when you are on the All My Groups page, which is the default one um, that you get to when you click on Engage in Groups, um, you have the possibility to see filter options. And in order to use them, you first have to give your course, uh, sorry, you have to give your group a filter. And that is where the label comes in. So these labels, they are your personal group labels. Nobody else but you can see them. So that helps to really sort groups the way or display groups and filter groups the way that you like to see um, in order to make sense of the organization for yourself. So if I add the semester, for example, I can now filter by label either by um, typing a label directly in here or in this case, I can see my group labels as well um, as part of the groups, can click semester, and then my group is, my list of groups is automatically filtered. Now, if I need to come back to that list, I'm still in the same semester. The nice thing is that that filter is sticky, um, meaning it is persistent across sessions. So until you change the setting, change the filter, either remove it entirely, add another filter or change it to another one, um, that filtering stays the same. So that is really fantastic if you want to use it to filter out your current semester courses. Now this filter is not only available here on the groups page, but also available for the sidebar and for your profile page. So in order to get it into the sidebar, you can go into your account preferences and then, uh, sorry, yep, sort where we have sort groups and display only groups labeled with 
um, either 2020 or in this case, let's choose our archived groups. And then only my archived groups show up here. In this case, because my course group was the one I also named archive, we see that. So if I add any other groups, so for example, human computer interaction, then I can also see that then in my sidebar when the page is refreshed. So now that group also shows up. The other place where you can label your groups is um, if you go to your profile page, um, where you typically always see all your groups. And so by editing that block, I can also say which groups I'd like to um, have appear here. And so if I, uh, let's choose archive as well. Save, and then we have the course group and the human computer interaction 101 group appear too. So this is how I can also control which groups people can see on my profile page um, in case I wanted to limit that search result, yet still show my membership in some of the groups. So really neat uh, functionality that is only available, of course, on the All My Groups page to see a filter and be able to filter because you can't label groups that you are not a member of. So if I go to all groups, then I can see the label here for the course group and the human computer interaction group, because that's where I'm a member, but I do not see the label on the graduation party because that is not one of my groups. Um, the other nice usability improvement is that I can now export all uh, of my portfolio or just parts of the portfolio in one go. So in the past, we always had the HTML export and the Leap2A export separately, um, which seemed like a good good idea at the time to, so that we can separate things out. Um, however, oftentimes we recommended that people download both exports so that they could import um, their portfolio back into a Mahara instance with a Leap2A file. Um, however, also look at their portfolio without needing a Mahara instance or another portfolio um, software that supports the Leap to A standard. And so we kind of always told people to download two of the exports. Now, makes perfect sense to put them together. Um, and if things are being imported into Mahara again, then Mahara just ignores the HTML files and chooses the Leap to A file. And um, if you want to use the HTML export, then all files can be extracted and you will just choose the HTML. And so and now instead of needing to make any decisions, you can just export all data in this case, or just some pages and collections and get to the um, export. And another feature in this case, a very experimental feature is that we can also export the entire account or parts of an account as PDFs. So this is um, a really great feature that we started to put into Mahara 2004, allowing um, everyone to um, create PDFs of their portfolios, yet still have access to any of the files that are included in it, because they are still part of the entire export. And that's why it's taking a little bit because it um, needs to create PDFs so that a collection consists of multiple pages um, according also to the collection itself and then generates the PDF from it. And so in contrast to the PDF that you get when you just uh, print a page, um, this PDF does also take along all the artifacts that are included um, in the 
um, in your account. And in this case, it is only because of comments that uh, can't be seen. And so what I can do is then, sorry, um, go to my export. And I've got the leap to a file here. All the other export info, the files are available. Everything has been exported. And I also have the HTML export, which I typically access via the index HTML page. And I also have all my portfolios as um, PDF files that in this case, um, I had a problem because I um, yeah, exported the, the wrong account. But if we take a look at an earlier one, then we would see that there are PDF files included as well. Um, what the PDF export does not yet export is, as we can see here, um, profile pictures of people where we have um, comments. Um, that is still a limitation that we are working through. And um, that's why the export is also deemed as experimental um, because we are still going through a number of um, elements that make it, yeah, number of elements to um, figure, figure out. So if I just go through another export very quickly in an account where there are not as many um, pages at the moment. We'll see very quickly um, that there are definitely PDF files included. The important thing to note for the PDF export is that um, the uh, that feature is experimental. So here we have all the PDF files with their page IDs and then the individual uh, portfolios that can consist of multiple pages. So the PDF export is experimental um, because there's a lot of moving pieces in there and also additional software needs to be installed on a server in order to run it. And so we wanted to make that functionality available yet also um, make sure that people know that there might still be some quirks in it and therefore labeled it as an experimental feature. But it's certainly something that um, is a great addition to the platform because it allows us to um, yeah, have more export formats that could also be uploaded to an LMS or kept for safekeeping without people needing to know about the HTML export. Now, another new feature, um, which is a seemingly small one, but still very powerful one, um, is the restriction of file types. So up to now, you could always upload any file type to Mahara. But what we've known from um, RFPs and talking with organization is that sometimes um, there need to be some restrictions. Uh, so, for example, that no exit files can be uploaded and that organizations do want to restrict what types of files um, learners can upload to the platform that are deemed safe um, by an organization. And that's why we have a config setting now um, that needs to be set on the server so that a site administrator cannot very quickly change it, but needs the approval of, um, an, of a system administrator and can now say which files can be uploaded. And if you try to upload a file that does not have one of those extensions, you'll be prevented from it. So those were a number of um, features that improve usability of the site and that are on a per account basis. Um, one last feature for that before we move on to a single sign on features is that when you have a portfolio and you go to the pages and collections page, 
you see a lot of portfolios there and everything looks very much the same um, in this case just the cards and um, one of the ideas that we've always had is to actually be able to put an image behind those cards so that the page looks much more lively and so thankfully um, one of our very new clients that um, we have, they implemented that and wanted us to work on that together with another support company for Mahara. And so what you can see now is this instead. So all portfolios, be that portfolio pages or collections, can have an image as part of the card on the pages and collections overview page, making it much nicer to look at and also much easier to find certain portfolios. You can even set up those images in your templates and then these cover images will come across to the individual portfolios. And if a portfolio has a description, there will be this overlay effect in order to still show that. However, otherwise, we'll have the images available. And uploading one of those cover images is uh, really very easy because it happens in the page settings under the advanced tab, where you can also find the instructions and a few other uh, goodies in order to make changes to your settings of the page. And there you can very easily upload an image or select one from your internal Mahara file storage. And as you can see here, I uploaded very small images because the recommended dimensions are 180 pixels wide by 130 because we really only need a very small image. That cover image is never really shown in full. And so it just helps to not um, have it uh, scrunched up or shown incorrectly if it is also being uploaded as such a small image because then it doesn't take away a lot of uh, space, makes it faster to load. And so you could remove that image and I can select another one. And so on my domain one page now, I have a different cover image there. And the same also goes, of course, for collections that you can add a cover image right there um, on the collections um, edit screen. Same function, uh, same principle, cover image is uploaded and then it is being displayed on the pages and collections overview page. So that now gives us lots and lots of possibilities um, later on um, to make use of those cover images. Um, for example, now if it were possible to um, change the display of the latest pages I can view and have more of those that tiled um, display of the portfolios rather than just a list because if people use cover images then they would be displayed really nicely and uh, potentially even when there's a public display of portfolios that um, there could be additional functionality added to Mahara um, in order to display those there. So lots and lots of possibilities um, stemming from this enhancement that we were able to just squeeze in at the last minute into Mahara 2004. But now let's take a look at some of the um, single sign-on features that are really of interest to organizations that are using single sign-on, so an external authentication method, and maybe even that have a lot of different organizations in one of the directories. And so the first um, change that I want to show you is that when you go to a Mahara page, typically you see the login, username and password field there. However, when there is um, single sign on in particular through a SAML bridge installed, you now per default 
see only that SAML button and then the rest of that form field is tucked away um, via the administration login. But of course, this um, language string can be changed in Mahara if you still want to allow other people who are not single sign on to access the site as well. However, in the past, we always needed to make that a customization, and now we kind of implemented it in Core Mahara. So also that if there is more than one single sign-on institution on it, um, you can see a second button here. So if we have one or two, there are two buttons, and only when there are three will we then be taken to the SAML page itself um, in order to select the authentication method that is to be used. Um, going into a Mahara instance as administrator, we implemented um, a number of improvements for, for SAML um, to allow us to automate certain processes. And that means, just need to, uh, sorry load the information, which is not displaying right now. Um, is the possibility to actually do, sorry, to do role mapping, um, allowing us to automatically assign administrator permissions, um, allowing us to assign Um, teacher permissions and also other roles automatically. So the things that we've added were all these SSO fields for roles, prefix, site administrator, site staff, institution admin, institution staff and auto group administration. So if you have a very extensive IDP, um, which is an identity provider for an external authentication, and um, you have everybody who is a teacher immediately given the teacher role, then now it is possible to put that role in here so that whenever a teacher logs into Mahara, they'll automatically have the staff permissions in Mahara. Or if you have a role for your administrators, they will automatically have that role. So there's no need anymore to go in once everybody has logged in and change the permissions around for them. And the nice thing is also if somebody loses their admin permissions in the IDP, that will also change the next time they are trying to log into Mahara. Then we also have this um, auto group administration field here. And um, that means that you can enroll one person or multiple people who have that role and they'll be added to every single group in your institution on Mahara. Um, that can be advantages um, if you do want to keep tabs on what people are doing in those groups or if you want to very easily always be available to provide support. Um, and that group, that role, cannot unsubscribe from forum posts so that they, they will always be um, alerted to new messages that come through because it is a role to monitor things um, and therefore make sure that everything works well in a group. The second part to that change for single sign-on was to also allow organizations who share one identity provider to be easily set up here on a Mahara site. And so that means that there is the possibility to say in an org institution that the administrator who has the group auto role, auto group administration, actually manages all the groups on the site. So we can use that as a site setting, um, but also narrow it down as an institution setting. And one feature that I can't show you so very easily here right now is because we don't have an IDP set up with multiple institutions in there, is that you can also set up institutions automatically. Um, so we only need to put the details for an IDP into Mahara once and then say that 
it is the master IDP from which then others can be created. And so if we say we have a Mahara site for many schools in a country and everybody in that particular country or in a state or in a territory is all part of that IDP, so they are all sharing the same authentication, then um, institutions for school one, school two, school three will be set up automatically as soon as somebody logs in from that school. So it is not necessary for an administrator to do go through the, those steps manually at all times, but that can be automated really, really nicely. And now this was a lot of um, information for administrators, slightly more on the technical side um, than we typically have new features. But there is one last thing that um, you might also like to see for the uh, um, IDP changes that we have made. And that is the possibility to actually be able to move an account from one institution into another institution um, all by yourself without any administ administrator intervention if the intaking institution is based on an IDP. So that would be the account move option that we have under the institution membership option. Um, where I can see all the institutions that have an IDP set up. Um, so in this case, a sample one. I can send a request to, sorry, needed to be on another service. Have the IDP set up, send the request and then it is taking me to the um, identity provider where I have my details. I need to sign into that in order to authenticate myself. I will then receive an email um, that comes with a link um, that I can click within a window of 30 minutes in order to confirm, yes, I do want to move my account. And then my account moves automatically into the new institution. And neither my current administrator nor my intaking administrator needs to do anything and um, when I want to move from one institution to the other. So this is really beneficial when we have multiple schools or multiple universities set up on one Mahara instance and um, students move from one school to another um, so that the administrators don't have to do all the work themselves, but students can take care of that all by themselves, keep their portfolio, still only have one account um, and change the authentication method themselves. And the last change that I want to um, just make you aware of is also the, the one where we changed everything in regard to um, our terminology for calling users people um, in order to really to humanize our um, language a bit more so that we are not having that negative association of in the English language of user anymore, but can be a bit more human. So people are people now, or they are group members, or account holders, or portfolio authors, or institution members, um, or just also individuals. Um, because we do want to try to, yeah, have a friendly atmosphere on the instance and use language that is more welcoming. There are many other features still on the site and also improvements that we have made and changes that were necessary because certain functionality is not available from third parties anymore. So for example, the Mozilla backpack has been deprecated by Mozilla. And so we needed to remove that functionality and 
Um, instead, it is still possible to use the Open Badge Passport or um, Badger to connect Open Badges. However, instead of simply not displaying Mozilla badges, we kind of made it clear to administrators that that functionality is not available anymore. And as usual, all of these new features are documented on the Mahara menu, um, where you can read up on them. And you can also take a look at the feature video um, if you want to kind of see the workflow again of how to get from one part to another. And then if you don't have a support company that can assist you with the installation of Mahara or that supports your site, you're of course always welcome to download it and install it on your own. Now with the release of Mahara 20.04, Mahara 18.10 went out of support because one and, a year, one and a half years have passed. And so that um, version is not supported anymore. However, um, recently we launched a new service, a premium service, the extended security support, which makes it possible to still be supported for security um, fixes for an additional two years on an instance of Mahara starting with 18.10. So that means if your organization cannot upgrade to 2004 or even 1910 immediately, then you could purchase the extended support and um, be able to continue using Mahara 18.10 until April 2022. And similarly for 1904, the extended security support makes it then available until October 2022 and so on. So the official community support is there for a year and a half, um, but it is possible to purchase extended support in order to also still get um, security patches for older versions of Mahara if needed. And that takes me to the end of um, what I wanted to show you and we'll open it up now for questions um, that you may have because we still have about 15 minutes for those. And please feel free to um, open your microphone or to use the text chat. Thank you, Christina. There was a question from Karen earlier about the PDF export. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Karen can use her mic or do you want me to ask it? Um, Karen, I, I can see the, the, the question. So PDF export will not export comments. Um, the PDF export should export comments. Um, we are currently just having problems with the profile pictures. Um, because those are actually items that are not stored in the personal account. They are only being pulled in from, from the profile of other people. And that's why we saw the, the, the messages there. So that is still something that we'll need to work out. Um, but I'll just double check on the comments um, itself after the session. I had a question, but more because I probably didn't pay enough attention to what you said. Uh, the file extension limitation, mm -hmm. is that something you put through all sites or can you uh, set it to specific groups? Um, that is for the entire site because that is set on the um, system level in the configuration file. So no matter where you are on the site, um, will, will you see that um, the file extension um, is being, yeah, or that it's being used. So you can't decide in a personal portfolio, um, I want to allow these five file types in group portfolios, I want to be able to upload um, a number of other files. So it is really across the entire site. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Which of the features did you like most?
for this release of the ones that I've shown you, or maybe also of the ones that you've read up on already. Well, for me, the one of the most impactful is the pictures that you mm -hmm. can they, they cover images. Yeah, that was a very nice um, addition that had come through through late and I'm really happy that we were able to put that in and make that immediately available for Mahara 2004. Yeah, I bet Maureen that cover images will make it easier for you to to find um, the portfolios because I imagine you'll have lots and lots and lots of them. So Jeremy asked, I love the cover images. On this view, would you ever offer the option to list them instead of having them display as larger images? Um, Jeremy, do you mean a list view instead of the card view so that you still have kind of your, your file view? Okay. Um, at the moment, we do not have plans to offer a different view of um, the portfolios. Um, initially, we had thought about having two different views for the same page, um, but we focused on the um, on the card display because that um, seemed to be a bit more modern in most cases as people are more and more used to that from websites where things can be selected um, as a, um, on a kind of cover basis. However, that doesn't mean that we are not open to also put um, the list view in if an organization is um, interested in funding that feature. Yes, and sometimes a list can be a bit easier to access, um, especially when you have lots and lots of portfolios. However, what could help um, Jeremy is um, to tag portfolios um, and then categorize them that way and um, view them through those tags because that will make the list shorter. So there are a few um, organization possibilities there. The other one that you could also use is um, to use the drop-down menu and change the sort order and change it to most recent first. And that sort order is also a sticky one. Uh, just going scrolling back and see if I missed any questions. No, that was Auckland weather. And so all of these features are available to you now, um, can be downloaded and installed. Um, we always bring out two versions of Mahara per year, one in April and one in October. And that's why this version is now called Mahara 2004, because it stands for the year 2020 and the month in which we released April. And so I'm very happy that despite um, all the COVID-19 um, issues that everybody is working through, that we were able to also bring it out in April and make it available to everybody. And so if you're right in the middle of a semester and don't think you can upgrade, you can of course wait until the end of the year when we will have Mahara 2010 available. Um, or maybe because of all the changes that are currently occurring, um, you would have the possibility to actually go to this new version. In particular versions Mahada 1910 and 2004 will have lots of changes for organizations uh, because we, and let me go into the screen share again for that to make that a bit easier to see. Um, we have changed a lot of things there, um, namely in particular of how to interact with pages um, on the edit screen. So in the past, we had this very um, rigid layout um, that needed to be um, adhered to where you could just choose, okay, I want to have three columns, two columns and so on. But now you can actually set your layout yourself um, by 
dragging and dropping a block over and then selecting the, the block type. Alternatively, if you want to set up a template, you can also just put a placeholder onto the page um, without it needing to be already a specific file type or a block type, which is really fantastic because that way you can leave it up to your learners to decide whether they want to put an image there, a video, text um, or anything else. Rather, you already saying this is a text, this is an image, this is an image gallery, because that then helps them not needing to remove those placeholders from the page if they decide to choose a different block type. Um, but they can go straight away with that. Um, so if we are just putting some text onto the page, then it is possible to drag that text box across the entire width um, or only partly so that you can design the layout on the fly directly in the edit screen. There is also an accessibility option available um, that blind um, blind students, for example, could select, um, which can be found in the account settings. Um, accessible page creation, which when turned on automatically creates the layout in a um, one column view and it is not possible to add other columns to it because in that case um, typically it needs to be read from top to bottom and that makes it just easier for people who need to work with the screen reader to still use Mahara. Um, without um, having that drag and drop interface and have everything work with a keyboard instead. Do you have any other questions? So we are content with the accessibility options, um, even for the drag and drop um, page creator. We are continuing our, our pledge to keep Mahara accessible. And we are going to work more on accessibility also over the next few months um, to look into what changes we would need to make in order to uh, support the new WCAG 2.1 standards better. Um, which are not so much oftentimes around um, uh, blind learners or those with just keyboard access, uh, but oftentimes also go quite a bit into providing additional information, making information more easier consumable. Um, and therefore there are certain areas in Mahara that we will need to take a closer look at, especially where we display a lot of data in order to make changes. So that is one of the projects um, we are going to look at over the next few months. Do you have any ideas or um, comments on some of the functionalities you've seen today and kind of already get your brain working on what else could be an addition to, to some of those. Okay, then um, thank you so much for um, having been part of our session today and um, looked into the Mahara 2004 features. 
if any of your colleagues also want to know more about it, um, there are still a few more sessions that um, are going to be held throughout the month. So please feel free to send them our way um, so that they can look at them, maybe also ask their, their own questions. And I will make the recording available to you, I'll send you the link to it um, so that you do have it. And then of course, you're also welcome to send that to your colleagues. And if there's anybody that would like to stay a little bit longer and ask a question, just not in the full room or on the recording, then please feel free to do so.